Hi everyone, it's Michael, and today's video is going to be highly experimental and a little bit weird. So, one of the things that I love the most about this incredible YouTube community is that we have an opportunity to really sound off on our tactics, our struggles, our concerns, our questions, and have the support of a community of people who have tried a lot of different things. So um, in my last monthly orchid collection update, I was talking a bit about my struggle with my frags. And so many of you sounded off on it, gave me so much great information and perspectives. Um, and it was super, super helpful. I quite embarrassingly said that I needed to defer to Roger Frampton's videos for frag information. And everyone was like, no, that's, that's Ed's orchids. So that's what I meant. And I'm so sorry. And I'm embarrassed about that. But um, Ed is so charming. He is so knowledgeable. He's so wonderful. Um, so the videos, I, I spent a lot of time just watching his videos. And I'm going to link one of them below, which I found, I found the most impactful for helping my understanding of frags. Um, but he was a great reference point for me. So thank you for directing me to him. Another great reference point came from Andrew from Andrew's Orchids. And it was super interesting because he left a comment on my video saying, here's what I think is going wrong. Here's what I think you should try. Maybe I'll make a video about it. And I of course commented back, yes, please do. I would love to see what you're doing. And he uses something that he refers to as his secret weapon as it pertains to his frags. He uses essentially an aquarium air pump to generate moving air um, so that the frags don't get stagnant water. Um, it helps to kind of just revitalize them. And um, that kind of got my wheel spinning, which is the foundation of this entire experiment. So I'm gonna link his video below as well. Um, but that is what we're trying today. I wanna give credit where credit's due. I think that's so important and I really, really appreciated him sharing that perspective. Um, so let's see how that does for me. Now, I wanna take you in on my frag so you can see just what's going on at the moment. So they were already struggling before I left Colorado and they're especially struggling after being shipped. Um, you can see the yellowing of this one is just, it's really accelerating quickly. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna cut off all of those um, decaying areas, all of these die, the die off, and just kind of treat with cinnamon. And then the same thing for number 13 in the collection. I'm just in the collection, I'm just gonna go ahead and get him treated, and then we will get them repotted into my highly experimental uh, arrangement. All right, so I'm gonna start with this guy, and I'm just going to reevaluate. This hasn't been repotted since, um, since when I first got it, so I'm gonna check for dead roots, things that have become not viable after its conversion to semi-hydroponics, and I'm gonna get rid of those. So now that I've got the root system taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the leaves. I'm gonna cut back into the healthy green tissue to remove all of this decaying matter, and then I'm gonna seal it off with some ground cinnamon, which is a fabulous natural antiseptic. All right, you guys, I've got it all trimmed up so you can see all healthy, happy green tissue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and seal all of these cuts with um, some ground cinnamon. Lately, I've just been enjoying just dipping it straight into it and letting the moisture of the open wound kind of collect that cinnamon powder. So it's occurring to me as I edit this video that some people are probably going to misunderstand why I'm proceeding this way. And they'll probably think that I'm providing too strong of a nutrient solution, which is causing the dieback with the leaf tips. But I can say with certainty that that's not the case. I water almost exclusively with distilled water and incorporate a very, very dilute nutrient solution very, very infrequently. So that being said, the issue is not that the nutrient solution is too concentrated. The issue is that I'm not flushing frequently enough and the water is becoming stagnant. And that is the reason I am proceeding this way. All right, you guys, I brought you in a little bit closer so you could see the next step, because this is where things get a little bit weird. Um, so I have pre-drilled my containers, as I always do, but there's a slight twist this time. So I've done my two drainage holes, but I've also done a hole right in the back, one centimeter higher than the two drainage holes. So I actually drilled these two at seven centimeters, and I actually drilled this one at eight. So what I'm gonna do now is use some of this standard airline tubing. So I'm gonna cut maybe, I don't know, a four foot rope of this. It's 25 feet, so I think I'll have plenty but I'm going to cut a fair amount here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now that I have this cut down is I'm going to thread this through the drainage hole that I drilled in the back one centimeter higher than the other two. And I'm just gonna pull it up to myself so it's accessible. Awesome. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach it to one of these aquarium bubble stones because the objective here is to create moving air and oxidize the water. Oxidize, oxygenate. I don't know if that's the right word. 
and I'm just gonna slide that right into the end, like so. And then I'm going to allow this to fall to the very, very bottom, like so. So you can see, it's essentially, you've got my bubble stone, you've got it attached to the hose, and it's going right underneath all of the LECA. So now that I have that there, I'm just gonna take LECA and fill right on top of it, all the way up to the drainage holes, just like I would do during a standard repot. So now that that's done, I'm gonna get my orchid placed. So I'm gonna take my frag, and I'm going to just place it right on top of the LECA and continue as if this were a standard repot. And that is the repot. Now I'm gonna clear this space. We'll take a closer look at what's going on. Um, I'm gonna get some water into the system and I'll show you exactly how we're moving forward from here. All right, you guys, here we are at the final product. You can see I've clipped away all of the dead and decaying matter. I've sealed all of the open wounds up with some cinnamon powder here. And then beyond that, if we go down lower, you can see and hear the air pump pushing oxygen through the water. And the theory behind this is that it would be just like an aquarium. So it will prevent the water from becoming stagnant, which is precisely what these plants don't like. So I'm really, really hoping this works out. This could be genius or it could be super, super dumb, but I think it's actually gonna go really well. Um, giving you a snapshot of how it looks in the back. So those are the um, extra drainage holes that I drilled. And again, I drilled them one centimeter higher than the drainage holes to make sure that while it bubbles, it doesn't overflow. So that appears to be going well. That is connected to the air pump down here, which has two um, sources of output, which is just pumping air through everything. And that's the general concept, you guys. I will absolutely keep you posted on this process and how they do. I'm really, really hoping this helps solve my struggles, but we shall see. Um, thank you guys so much for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave it in the comments section below. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye guys.